Welcome to the Blue Oasis Podcast. I am your host, Adam Rothstein. All right, let's get to the show. All right, so today's episode is going to be a very special one. It's going to be about video games and how they became a career opportunity for average Joes and everyday people. So let's start with the history. All right, Uh, the early days of video games were just simple dots on a screen. And if you were lucky enough to be able to program a video game, uh, you really couldn't do much with it. You could entertain some people for a while, but there was no market for it until the uh, early 70s uh, with the Magnavox Odyssey and uh, Pong. So once Pong uh, came around during the uh, during 1972, did you actually have a form of a passive income? Yeah, could yeah, video games actually became a passive form of income in 1972. Only problem was was that it wasn't nomadic. You couldn't just take it anywhere you pleased. It it was still. The machine was heavy. You couldn't just haul it anywhere you pleased and just set it down. And you had to maintain it. And you could only get revenue from one uh, source at a time. You just couldn't uh, have the machine just go to one pizza shop to another. You still, unless you had multiple uh, machines at your multiple shops, could you actually make uh, some extra money or from it? But at first, most people were actually uh, a little alienated by something like this. But once many people saw Pong, it began to take off and became popular. Yeah. Okay. Um... So, during the late 70s, the Atari came out, and uh, programmers were needed during this time. And once there was this home console market, did you see career opportunities come to play? Now, there was only a few career opportunities uh, for some people because there was just so many there were just so few people that could actually program a video game back in the late 70s. So no one knew what they were doing at the time, really. So it was just incredibly hard. You couldn't just go uh, open up your laptop and write some code and you have a video game in one hour. That just wasn't possible back then. So, yeah. So once the uh, late 70s uh, ended, the early 80s came, and you had uh, Pac-Man come out as well. And and it's not Pac-Man that really started the uh, real craze um, exactly for arcade games, but it certainly helped. And then once Ms. Pac-Man came out, uh, did things get interesting? So the story with that was that two MIT dropouts actually created Ms. Pac-Man from the original Pac-Man game, and they built a board and programmed the board and just changed up the gameplay uh, with Ms. Pac-Man. So, and they actually got some dividends going from Midway, if I'm not mistaken, and they actually earned quite a lot of money from Ms. Pac-Man. So that was very interesting when that happened. Uh, yeah. So the 80s rolled on, uh, and you still had some uh, video game tournaments, uh, some arcade tournaments of champions, and you could win some prize money, but it still didn't present a career opportunity for the uh, normal person. And, and it's only until the 90s did things begin to take off, actually. So, the 90s 
became the year to really just get some income going. Uh, now, a little history note was that the Apple Pippin was the first video game console to go online, but the Sega Dreamcast was the first one to really take advantage of the internet. And yes, you did have PCs at the time, and you could play on bulletin boards, but it, even that was in its infancy during the, during the 80s. So once you actually had the internet uh, go, uh, you soon had Xbox come in in 2001, and you could play online and talk to people and coordinate strategies for games like Halo and even Quake, I think. Yeah, Quake was on Xbox. And and people did get these ideas of tournaments. Even with the N64, with GoldenEye, uh, people just had these tournaments and competed with each other. But And I guess they did ha- play for money it's sometimes but it, it was like just poker money it wasn't much but when the 2010s came around did things get interesting you had twitch.com you could go on twitch you could live stream your content and just play and people would donate money to you and They can actually donate money to you on YouTube as well, so you could actually live stream your game and uh, play it as well. The best thing... Now, so that is some of the uh, history from how it became a career opportunity. Uh, We're only seven minutes in or so. Uh, So no one really... So unless you were a programmer or you had an arcade machine, could you actually be an average Joe and earn some income from it? The only thing with this was that you were limited to where you could go and you were limited by store hours as well. I mean, the pizza shop could only keep things open for a certain amount of time. And yes, there's an electric bill that needed to be maintained. There was the machines themselves, and you had to pay a guy to empty the quarters, so it it didn't pay huge dividends like it does today, and never before has it been cheaper or easier to make a career off of video games. And that's just playing it. You could program it. So I'm just going to do a little plug here. Uh, So if you go on Skillshare.com, I mean, you can learn how to program on iOS as well and just get your app down, uh, but you still have to market it, and that's just the hard part. So, So if you get past the marketing and you get some sales going, you can create a passive and nomadic income that way and... Just live a freer life as well. So, yeah. All right. Now, um, with the iOS uh, becoming popular, iOS and Android and mobile games becoming popular, uh, you can actually program your game and get it on the App Store. And people would buy it. There was a game called Temple Run. Uh, nearly 10 years ago, and there were Angry Birds as well. And no one knew who these people were that programmed these games, but they became popular. And Angry Birds was so popular that they had two movies uh, about it. No one would have thought uh, 20 years ago, when the Sega Dreamcast was brand new, that... You know that you could actually earn a living. Uh, you can earn millions of dollars from uh, games, just making mobile games, and just retire. Actually, I, I'm not sure if you can actually retire, but it, it just pays huge dividends. Is my point. Now, now, 
you're probably saying to yourself, Adam, that's all well and good, and thank you for the history lesson, but how do I create this for myself? Well, uh, aside from Skillshare, you can actually just start a YouTube channel, you can start a Twitch, you can start a library, and now you may not be able to stream or do a live stream on YouTube right away, uh, so just just do a Let's Play, and, and yes, you're going to be limited to only 15 minutes per video until you get over that 1,000 subscriber hump, but you can still do it and, and uh, just teach people where to go, so if... So just pick a game, let's say uh, Super Mario Galaxy or Super Mario World, and you can just go through the levels, record your progress, and just may put a video for one level, and if you hover around 10 minutes of per video, uh, yeah, and I think there's like... Um, like a few dozen levels in Super Mario World. That's a few dozen videos, and and so multiply thirty six times ten. You're at three hundred sixty minutes. If each one of those gets one view, there are four thousand hours you need to make. And guess what? That is uh, six hours that you have right there from one game, but. But if you just put out, let's see, so you have six hours, right? And you put out, and you find a thousand people to watch that. Guess what? You have 6,000 hours watched from one game. That's crazy. Now, are those people going to subscribe or just stumble on your video? Well... That's also up in the air. You can definitely get up there quickly with a thousand subs. Just find your friends, get an email list going, and tell them to subscribe as well. And so just put it on your Facebook page, put it on your Twitter, and put some hashtags there, and uh, get your friends to retweet it, and and. It's going to reach some audience. Um, just going to YouTube for a sec. Um, there were some random people who commented on my uh, 60,000 word video. And they were just inspired by me. Like just to keep going. And and I just put it out there. Just talking about my progress. So make progress with your, with your videos. And... If you have a popular game like uh, Super Smash Brothers or the new Super Smash Brothers, yeah, people are going to watch that. You're going to get easily 10 views per video, and you don't even necessarily have to contact your friends on that one. There are just little kids or teenagers that just want to see people play and look for new moves. It's incredible. It's crazy. No one would have thought about this so many years ago. And 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 I am probably going to start my own uh, gaming channel or just go to library TV and uh, post some Let's Plays. Uh, funny thing is, I actually posted myself playing chess on my YouTube channel, but it, I only got like 100 views on that video. So e even chess... You can get something going as well. It, and it's crazy. So where does the future of 